Hey, this is Nerdy Text Account, and I'm going to be doing a video on why there is no gay, lesbian, LGBTQ, plus, whatever, how many numbers and letters there are now in that, you know, representation, well, explicit scenes in the MCU. And, you know, with other movie franchises like it, with Harry Potter and Dumbledore, the main purpose of this is to respond to SJW articles complaining about, you know, not having enough explicit scenes in there. This is basically to explain why these scenes are either getting cut or not being filmed at all. I'm going to be going over a few articles, well, sections of them, and videos you can watch to help you gain more knowledge in this subject if you're interested. Queer moviegoers were excited when Tessa Thompson announced via Twitter that her character, Valkyrie, was bisexual. That excitement turned to frustration, though, when Thompson clarified the ex-Guardian warrior's sexuality was not explicitly addressed in the film. An earlier edit featured a more overt reference to Valkyrie's bisexuality. Thompson convinced director Takia Taika Waititi to shoot a glimpse of a woman walking out of her bedroom, but it was ultimately cut from the final version. In the Thor comics, Valkyrie is indeed presented as bisexual and once kissed anthropologist Annabelle Riggs. I've not been keeping up with the Thor comics, so I don't know if Valkyrie did do that, if it was before, you know, the SJW move in Marvel or not so if you can leave a comment down below that would be great and this is going to be one of the main things that I'll be talking about like why this scene was most likely cut from the film the rest of the article goes on to say that you know Loki is also another gay character you know can change his gender and everything like that, you know, bisexual character. And Korg, the rock alien from the movie, is also gay. Apparently that happened in another Thor comic, which, again, I have no idea if it was before, you know, SJW Marvel was occurring, you know, when the SJW took over, or if it just was in there from before. But there's one more article I'm going to be going over. Appa Ben went over this whole entire article in his video, This Will Never Stop. I recommend checking him out. If you haven't subscribed to him, I recommend doing that. And I'll probably be going over things that since he lives in Indonesia, that he might not know completely all the stuff here in the U.S. as to why these scenes would be getting cut. And they're actually very, you know, easy and simple reasons why they're getting cut. All right, moving on to the article. Similarly, these major franchises remain woefully without LGBTQ plus representation. Loki played by Tom Hedleston, was a hit among MCU fans. The studio knew this and capitalized on it. Some may remember Hiddleston's famous San Diego Comic-Con appearance in both the comics and Norse mythology. Loki is bisexual and gender fluid. The films have not addressed this at all. The main problem with this point that I'm having is, well, Loki 
you know, Norse mythology, Loki gave birth to a horse. I believe a six or eight legged horse. And I don't know too much about, you know, in the comics, but the MCU is separate from the comics. They're only basic um, retellings or based on the comics, not explicitly the comics alone. So pretty much that's one problem I have with this article, with this portion and you know, with this, it's pretty much also saying, well, if you tell them that, you know, Batman wore zebra striped, you know, Batman costume in the sixties and became Bat Baby, should the Batman movies do that? No, probably not. But, you know, those are completely different things. Like one's being extremely ridiculous and the other is, you know, one thing else. But the point is, just because it's in the comic doesn't mean it's going to be getting into the film. Even when there are opportunities to be to depict LGBTQ plus characters, it often gets vetoed. It's significant that in Thor Ragnarok, T. Seth Thompson's a woman of color, I don't like that term of color, was cast as Valkyrie, a traditionally white blonde character, but the exclusion of her bisexuality is disheartening. Still, Thompson deserves credit for her vocal support of Valkyrie's identity, even going so far as to suggest that her character as female lover did make a brief appearance. It's just like how Appa Ben said, you can give them what they want, but it still is never enough. It's like you can have a more diverse group, but even then they'll still complain about something that you're still not diverse enough. So yeah, that is one of the biggest problems with these SJWs. Similarly, there was some consideration of including a scene in Black Panther where Okoye played by Denny Groot Ria and Ayo played by Florence Kasumba briefly flirt with each other. This scene ultimately did not make it into the film. Again, this failing to confine to the MCU as the Harry Potter franchise has repeatedly neglected opportunities to include explicitly LGBTQ plus characters shying away from Dumbledore's homosexuality. Don't worry, I promise we'll be getting to why these scenes are getting cut and why the SJWs don't understand why. Just one moment or a few more moments. Good news, we're past the SJW articles. And I'm pretty sure we're all very glad for that. And now I'll be getting to the reasons why these articles were, the mistakes that these articles seem to have forgotten about with the, you know, industry, like the practical reasons why the scenes were getting cut and also the, well, the business reasons why it was getting cut. It's very simple and very, really easy when you think about it and once you know why. All right, we'll now begin with the reasons. The first two reasons that we're going to be going over with is pretty much the most practical. The time slash length of the movie and the scenes are unnecessary. First simple reason is the length of the movie. If a movie is too long, that means that they can't play it in the movie theaters as often as they wanted to. So that means that they can not show it as many times and will then mean less money. 
because not as many people are going to be going to the movie theaters. That is a very simple and practical reason why. And to meet the length of the movie, usually they will cut scenes that are unnecessary, don't advance the plot, the story at all, or they were just not deemed good enough to be kept in. There are plenty of times when scenes get cut. This isn't a new thing at all with the industry. They cut so many scenes out of movies and it can completely change the movie too. There are multiple movies that actually had major scenes cut which were needed to understand the plot of the movie due to company interference. This isn't new. Well, these are the reasons why the scene, if they did film it, would get cut. Here is the main reasons why they wouldn't film it, or again, there's also be reason why they would still cut it from the movie, even if the scenes were filmed. The main ones are also the MPAA ratings, and of course, as we already talked about a little bit earlier, money. It's quite simple. The MPAA ratings affect a lot with film industries, and that will, of course, affect money. The videos that I watched on it were Nostalgia Critics. Does PG mean anything anymore? And, of course, Adam ruins everything. He ruins Hollywood. They explain it pretty much. You know, there are certain words and things that are in there that will get a rating. You know, Nostalgia Critics stated a film. I can't. That doesn't seem to be coming to mind at the moment. How it was about, you know, a gay couple getting married. It has an R rating. But there are a lot of horror movies that are PG-13. And he is main video is pretty much PG movies need to get a little bit more tougher. PG-13 movies need to now well, gay stuff in there and less horror into the PG-13. And with Adam Ruins Everything, Adam Ruins Hollywood, his video was about talking about how the MPAA ratings are selected. Like pretty much no one knows who does it. It's just random families chosen, random parents. And, you know, like if you say a certain word with one meaning, you know, you say one explicit word, it's worse than another explicit word. And pretty much if you say the F-bomb in one way, it'll get you PG-13. If you say it once, if you say it another way, it'll get you a rated R. And, well, for connotations. And there's actually a way of getting it to an NC-17. You know, with, if you have gay, lesbian, LGBT, you know, sex, making out with them saying the F word. That is, but that's like explicit stuff which I have not seen. So, these are main reasons why the film industry does not want that rating. You know, they would cut it out because if Disney said that they would only have a PG-13, which they have said this, all the MCU would be PG-13. There would be no rated R movie in the MCU. Therefore, they would cut scenes that would give it an R rating. Or not even fill them at all. Another video that explains it explains why, you know, with MP AA ratings and connecting it to money is actually good bad flex. WTF happened to PG thirteen. It is 
a very good video. I recommend watching it, and he has such a good channel. I don't watch the Soundtrack Critic much anymore, nor do I watch Adam Ruins Everything anymore. They, they just bored me, and I got tired of them. But I recommend Good Bad Flicks. Well, he connects it by explaining how the MPAA ratings affects revenue and how it will affect it is pretty much he explains that if you if your film has an MPAA rating of you know rating R then some channels will ban you or not even advertise your movie not only that it shrinks your demographic range so anyone who's under 17 can't go in to see the movie without a parent present for rated r well with pg-13 it's the perfect <laughs> film rating for the demographics because you can have parents you know go in to watch it you can have you know teenagers watch it and if you have younger siblings they can probably watch the pg-13 even if they're under 13 because their parents are there so that's what he was saying that the age range for people to be able to pay to watch the film is higher in the pg-13 rating than the rated r the advertising therefore more people can learn of pg-13 movies thereby increasing revenue is higher with pg-13 than rated r and those are very practical reasons and if the scene you know that has you know gay lesbian scene pretty much showing them kissing gets you through that r rating then it would only be logical to cut it out to be able to get to the largest demographic or get to the mpaa rating that what that can get the largest amount of people watching your film so a simple recap would be over everything would be pretty much the main reason why the scenes are getting cut or for pretty much length of the movie to try to increase profit by getting more people able to watch it by having more viewings the mpaa ratings you know trying to get to the pg-13 where disney wants it at and probably most other production companies and film industry want it at because it allows them to reach the largest audience possible all for the sake of getting the most amount of money that is why these scenes are getting cut that is the main reason and probably also because the scenes are not necessary to the overall film like in the advancement so whether there or not it doesn't affect the film this is not always the case but usually it is for the last part and my guess is that Dizzy could have it have these scenes in the bonus features that's probably what's going to happen like that's probably what's going to occur and so they'll be able to get their money back that way hey well you now got to see my you know i put the disclaimer there just in case and you got to see my 
sources. I'll also put those in the link. Yep. I'll link them down below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, leave a comment on how I can improve what you thought of the video. Uh, anything you can think of. And yep, thank you for watching. No, hit the like button if you liked the video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to you know, get regularly updated on when I post and upload. And hit the notification bell, you know, to get notified when I do the when I do post videos, upload them. Well, thank you for watching, and hope you have a nice day.